Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, Geography Apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about geography apps. And geography is something that comes up in a lot of grades in different ways and we've talked about different mapping and other apps and I'm going to talk about some apps everybody's familiar with but from a somewhat different perspective and then a, a few new apps that I really like. So let's start with one of the basics. Google Maps is a great app and what I love about this is that you can explore things near and far very easily. So for example, if we're exploring our own neighborhood, it'll zoom in, right? So we can tell it to zoom in and then we can explore our neighborhood. For example, let's find some gas stations around us. And that's a great way if we're working with young kids and we're trying to explore the immediate neighborhoods. And they may be familiar with where things are, but chances are, especially young kids, they just get in the car and they know it's somewhere around, but they don't know where it is. And so you can look at the blue dot is where we're at, and this is where the nearest gas station is, and even where it's at. And you can look at the distance to drive there, but as you, as if you've ever used it, you can see that you can also get a clearer map and then look at different ways to get there, which is a fantastic way to get kids thinking about how do you get around, especially if you don't have your own car. And this allows you to look at bus routes, at uh, bicycling, and at walking, and it'll give you an estimate. Is it near? Is it far? How long does it take? So this is a great way to put in math, to look at speed, or to look at the neighborhood itself. So let's, for example, look at our bus route, and it turns out there is a bus that can pick you up right outside where we're at and drop you off right next to the gas station. Now, if you're riding a, a bus, you probably don't need the gas station, but that's a different story altogether. So this is a way to do searches, and you can do search for schools, you can search for really anything in your immediate environment or anywhere else in the world. You can also start thinking about distances for example, how far away is, let's say, Los Angeles from where we're at right now? Kids don't necessarily have a sense of that, so this is a great way to start getting those senses for places that are farther away and start finding the way that it is. So this is a great way, and I really recommend, before we get to complicated things, before we really use uh, sophisticated apps and quiz apps and all of that. This is a great way to explore. It's available for everybody. It's free. It's across devices. Great, great uh, app. So this is Google Maps. And with it, and an app I talk about quite a bit, is Google Earth. And the one thing I wanted to show that, uh, that we haven't had before on Google Earth is all kinds of tours and 3D a animation of buildings that has been more and more part of it. It has been on the computer for quite a while, but on the iPads it's taken a, quite a bit of time to get there. But as you can see, we're looking right now, we're visiting Rome, and this is the view from above for a specific area in Rome. And I just wanted Rome because it's got lots of buildings and interesting sites. And what you can see is we can see the area but if we just lift this, you can actually get small videos that show you the area that building is in and gives you usually a 360 tour of the outside of the building. So if we choose uh, the Pantheon, for example, you can see that it zooms in on the location, slowly builds. That depends on your uh, bandwidth. If you have very low bandwidth, Google Earth is usually not a good idea. If you have decent bandwidth, I would go with it. And you can see that now we see the building and we slowly circle around it so we can see the environment, but we can also see the building from uh, the outside. Right now, I've got most things turned off here. So you can't see the layers, but I can add layers. For example, I can add the pictures and they will start showing up. You can see that slowly, you can see the, the photos that are on uh, Google Earth. They can add dimension. So when the movie's over, we can actually 
access them and get a look at different angles and people that have uploaded uh, photos of the environment around it and of the Pantheon itself. So you can see that this, this is there and you, you'll have lots other ones from different perspectives. So it's a way to explore buildings and locations and not just the area around it. So this is another great feature that is available on Google Earth and if you're studying about any other country or even about your own community so we can go to our own community right and we zoom out and cross the ocean and get back to Lincoln Nebraska and we can do the same exact thing so Rome is really exciting but if we're uh, in first second kindergarten uh, and we're learning about our own neighborhood and our own uh, city this is an opportunity to do the same kind of thing and you can see that there are different tours. For example, there's a tour of Memorial Stadium. So we're zooming in. Let it build for a second. And then do the visit and the 360 and you can see how many photos are shared here. So this is a great way, again, you can explore your own community or you can explore a community anywhere else. People can, kids can explore the communities where the parents came from, grandparents, family a long time ago, or a, a country they're studying. So this, this has a lot of uses that you can do in the classroom. And um, I think that this new addition of the 3D buildings and the ability to see these mini tours is really powerful to get the dimensions and to get the sense of what the building looks like, not just as a, as a 2D photo, but actually, or from above, but actually the, the, just the whole dimension of that. So this is a Memorial Stadium and this is a Google Earth. The next two that I want to share with you are more connected to using a quiz approach to learning certain facts in geography and there's lots of these apps out there. I want to highlight two. One is GeoSkills and in GeoSkills you can compete against the computer or you can practice or you can play in multiplayer mode against others and you can create a situation where kids in your classrooms are competing with each other in knowledge um, I'll show you the practice mode and in the practice mode you can select maps now you get the US for free everything else you have to pay for so you have to consider whether it's worth it but for three dollars you get all the maps around the world and this focuses obviously on maps and this is the US and I like this one because it's very straightforward good practice so kids get to practice they don't have to guess they actually are guided through. So if we're looking at the basic set of states, New Mexico, Alaska. Alaska. The, the one thing about Alaska here that I'm a little apprehensive about is that it's here at the bottom. And kids might mistake, might mistake the fact that it's actually south of Mexico somewhere. And so that's not the greatest. Hawaii. The same thing with Hawaii. Uh, but you can see that it guides you through. Now it asks you to practice and actually tell us Alaska. where those states are. So you can Mexico. do this. And if I have the wrong one, it tells me, no, that was wrong. It In needs Mexico. to be there. Hawaii. And then you have to start Texas. all over again. And you get Alaska. to move on. If you get all of them correctly, you move to the next bunch of states. So you can see how this builds knowledge and then actually asks you to actively show that you know it and have a lot of practice built into it. So this is GeoQuiz, very, very simple, very straightforward, but it's one of those things that we really don't want to spend a lot of classroom time on. So this is something that kids can do in a station time or in even free play time or even at home. So you can recommend to parents to use that, especially if you're learning the US. They can learn not just the names of the Fiste state, but actually where they're at. And this is something that I picked up recently, and this is called Spy Hunt. In Spy Hunt, what you do is you hunt spies, and you get the spy music and a very nice effect, very simple. We're trying to find Dr. Schniffels. And so uh, I played a little bit just to try this, and this is an unknown city, and we have to guess what it is, and I'm not sure I know. Well, if you don't know, 
you can reveal a letter Oh, is this a country? Oh, maybe I should have. So, you gain coins by answering correctly. And you can see that there are actually different kind of questions so some of them are map based, some of them are uh, picture based, some of them are about cities, some of them are about sites, some of them are about countries, so you need to read very carefully and uh, learn about that. So you can see this is... And the thing that I like about this is that it gives you clues, it allows you to ask friends if you've got, it's got some, some ads, so that's not necessarily what I'd like to uh, have kids be exposed too much to. But what you can use this for is a way of exploration. And that is you get the question and then you go and find out the answer. So it's a way to interact with this and use it as a springboard to have an adventure where you're looking for things and you're trying to find them. And that develops this ge geographic skills, but it also develops your search skills and the ability to use clues to find out answers to things you're interested in. So it's really a much, it can be a lot about search. So today we talked about a few apps that help you with geography. Some of them are very basic like Google Maps and Google Earth. They're everywhere. They have been around for a long time, but they're fantastic tools to develop all kinds of skills and you really can uh, use them in many ways on the iPad or on other devices as well. And then you can use the quiz functions that a lot of the apps have to develop just the memorization and knowledge of certain facts that really help kids develop a sense of the world. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom. <laughs>